Welcome to my world. Another day, another time, another period for knowledge acquisition. Knowledge is power, health is wealth. Today we are on the topic prevention of chronic diseases, laboratory diagnosis. Chronic diseases are things that you experience, especially in old age. We are talking of something that takes too long, that goes on for almost uh, entirely for a lifetime, and usually not curable. Uh, it's only by continual treatment. Before these days, we had no experience of diabetes. It was hardly heard of because then there were no insulin to give. So people who really had that diabetes uh, problem that requires insulin injection probably would have died so early, experienced it, they die. That's more of an acute disease. But the diseases that you manage for a very long time has grown to become a chronic problem, a chronic disease by even classification. And because we now have insulin, you find uh, people being able to manage their diabetes for a long while, and that is uh, the experience of chronic disease. But there are chronic diseases that are as a result of infection, bacterial infection, viral infection. And once they are quickly treated, they go. But for example, uh, Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a bacterial infection that is treatable if treated those days with uh, rifampicillin. If you are able to treat it and uh, you recover from it, then it's no longer a chronic disease that you continue to uh, really worry about. It's gone and gone forever. So the prevention of chronic diseases is my concern today, and I'm going to make that effort to let us know what we can do for those that we can cure, probably early curing, those that are generally genetic, and there are other factors which I shall look into using the aid of the laboratory diagnosis to come to the conclusion of best way to prevent it. So if you like what you are looking at, just click the like button, subscribe, and be sure more quality products will come. Prevention of chronic diseases, lab findings. Upline, objective, introduction, common chronic diseases, infection and inflammatory response, dilemma of prophylaxis and conclusion. The objective, to expose the various causes of chronic diseases and their immunological or inflammatory responses for a better understanding of their prevention. Introduction. Chronic diseases are defined broadly as conditions that last one year or more and require ongoing medical attention. Chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes are the leading cause of death and disability in the United States. Many chronic diseases do not result from infection. Some are genetic, other result from environmental toxins. Other result from the interaction of multiple behavioral and other risk factors, and others are of unknown causes. Common chronic diseases are listed cancer, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, obesity, tuberculosis, tobacco use, chronic lung disease, chronic kidney disease, arthritis, azemia disease, toothache, and the maternal causes. Infection and inflammation. The laboratory diagnosis of chronic diseases by detection of viral antigen or immunoglobulin G, IgG and IgM antibody. Using various methods should ordinarily inform anybody that there is an implication of infection in chronic diseases. When we talk of IgM and IgG, the IgM is the force to be produced. IgM production does not last for too long before the IgG is produced, and that takes uh, almost forever, as long as the infection is there. That's why it is one of the parameters used to confirm that an infection is uh, chronic. 
Also, resistance to oripamprazine and isocyanide combination of tuberculosis show clearly that chronic disease endure because of continued infection. Inflammation triggered by infection or by immune response to infection can lead to chronic disease such as chlamydia infection and cardiovascular diseases. The initial stage of polio virus infection can also cause permanent lifelong deficit or disability. We also have situation of maternal infection uh, causing predisposing to psychiatric disorder. There is also the chlamydia pneumonia being implicated in cardiovascular diseases. It's also the cause of respiratory infection and the observation that individuals with IgG antibody to chlamydia pneumonia were at high risk of subsequent developing myocardial infarction. Peridonitis has been linked to increased inflammation elsewhere in the body, as declared by elevated level of C-reactive proteins that we find checked for in the lab and interleukin. Peridonitis is associated with an increased risk of stroke, myocardial infarction, and atherosclerosis, and uh, the, it's also peeped in the valleys, IgA antibodies titer, predicted myocardial infarction. Obesity, there is a research study that observed the correlation of adenovirus 36 and uh, uh, increased adiposity. So, people with adenovirus that is uh, will usually have uh, uh, usually showing uh, this obesity. Twin studies also support the association. Infected twins tend to be obese more frequently than do their uninfected siblings. Elephantiasis caused by microfilaria, a parasitic infection is another example of acute disease that could become chronic disease if not diagnosed early in the laboratory. There are, there are also many other viruses Episimplex, um, and also the human papilloma virus that is incriminated with uh, the cervical cancers. The episimplex is also incriminated in cervical cancers. So many chronic diseases that the virus, uh, different virus, should cause. The prophylaxis dilemma. It would have been advisable to talk of antimicrobial prophylaxis. But with the scourge of antimicrobial resistance witnessed in laboratory studies, where organisms that were originally susceptible some years back are now resistant to many antimicrobial agents, it is a no-go area. So when we're talking of prophylaxis, probably you want to suggest that the person should use antibiotics, then it is not advisable. Conclusion, the identification of infection as a trigger for chronic diseases is very important because it may allow earlier diagnosis and treatment of the disease and provide important prevention opportunities. But many chronic diseases do not result from infection. Some are genetic, others result from environmental toxins, others result from the interaction of multiple behavioral and other risk factors and others are of unknown cause. And because they don't have any known cure, they continue to be chronic uh, diseases. The, these chronic diseases caused by the underlisted risk behavior are preventable. The underlisted ones are tobacco use and exposure to second hand smoke. When you are so much in the kitchen and or what have you, then and there's a smoky area, then you must be careful. Poor nutrition, including diets low in fruits and vegetables and high in sodium and saturated fat, especially sodium and saturated fat, you are prone to this CVD. Physical inactivity, yes, obesity could also result. Excessive alcohol use. There are more, many more videos on my channel. Please just look, look for, for